Hello everyone and um, welcome to another week in our garden. It's a beautiful sunny day today, Friday today. And we've had some atrocious weather for the last week. That's why we couldn't put the video out. The garden was absolutely wet through and the rain and the wind just didn't stop. But it has. This week I'm going to show you how I prepare the ground for the cauliflowers. It's very similar to the cabbage. These four plots that are going to carry the brassicas will all be done the same with manure in the bottom. I'll show you how to do that. If you remember, we did the onion bed and we put manure in the top and the bottom. It's a slightly different way that I do it for my brassicas, but I'll show you. Now, as you can see, it's a very, very similar way to the way we did it for the onions but we don't put manure in the top spit so what I do is I just throw I take the take the trench out like we did for double digging put the manure on and then we dig it dig the bottom of the, of the trench just keep going along, it's very very wet because we've had that much rain so we'll do this trench and then I don't think I'll do any more until it dries out a little just turn it over but don't bite off too much else you'll never get them you'll never be able to turn it down there That's it. All going in nicely. Couple more turns and then we can one and two. Then just clean it off down, break it up a little. Now, because it's for brassicas, now, before I carry on, I'm sorry about the noise. We was on lockdown from yesterday and there's a huge amount of cars and lorries on the motorway, so sorry about that. Now, we've turned the bottom of the trench over. Because it's brassicas, we need to put lime in. So what I'm using is granulated lime it's a little bit slow to react obviously and this will take most of the winter to break down into the soil your plants your plants do need lime i did do a ph test on all the brassica beds before i started although it was only with the electronic one but it's near enough and they all showed there was a little bit on the acid side and I think that could be down to the floods we had but we'll correct it by putting plenty of lime on now it's it'd be no good testing straight away you've got to give granulated lime time to break up in the soil so it'd be spring before we test again then if we need some more then we can top press again the other thing we need to put on We've put some manure in there. Now, as the manure decays, it will need nitrogen. So if we don't give it any nitrogen, it will take nitrogen out of the soil. So to get the microbes, etc., and the rotting down going, we need to put some nitrogen in, which in our case is just a sprinkle of hoofenorn in there, and that will help balance the nitrogen up. So this is the hoof and arm we use, it's a meal, it's the same meal that we used on the onion bed for exactly the same reason to replace some of the nitrogen and it, it does smell a bit obviously but we have a good sprinkle of that in as well. Just along there look and that will replace any of the nitrogen then it's just a case of moving the string back 
like we did on the other bed and turning that to the next trench should be quite soft for digging put the fork in and then move that string to this side give yourself plenty of room and then same again here at an angle so it pulls the string tight or the rope tight it looks a lot of work to uh, do the brassicas but we'll show you when we harvest them later the difference it makes to the finished product and then we just dig it over break it down and this barley straw that I put on top that stops the mud sticking to your boots a little bit is dug in as well but there's not a lot of nutrients in just barley straw just nice and tidy keep top level I should do just a couple of turns but it's awfully wet for this measure off and break and then just turn Doesn't matter where it lands, as long as it's in that area somewhere. Make sure you're nice and level. Now, with this soil being so wet down the bottom here, I'm not going to dig anymore. I may as well leave it, let it drain out a little bit. But you've got the idea how we we'll do it. Put the manure in the bottom trench, in the bottom spit, and then dig it in put some hoof and horn on it for the nitrogen as the manure rots and then we top dress that with the lime in this case it's granulated lime and then just turn over and leave it then next year test it again and also get it ready for planting the brassicas so we'll go we'll probably harvest uh, a swede and a turnip and a leek for making some nice winter soup with and then we'll have a look at that celeriac that needs covering up a little bit now we're getting frost every morning I see the chickens uh, eating the chard today they're all in their molt now so they don't look the prettiest of birds and the other thing is they won't lay while they're molting but they're welcome to a bit of chard, it'll do them good. We'll have three of these purple top turnips, they'll be nice. Don't take much pulling up, but they look good. So you want three of those. We'll take three of the biggest, which they're all about the same size anyway. Two. This one from those pages. Three purple tops. And um, we'll have a swede as well, I think. Now the swedes aren't awfully big, so we'll take two. It's a nice swede. We'll take a pair of those, I think. There you go then, nice pair of swedes and three turnips and we'll lift the three leeks as well I think and that one show them in the rust eh? there's one little bit of rust on the top but that'll be fine leave the soil down if possible so I'll lift two more 
Three leeks. Right, I'll just take a handful of these spring onions because we are using them in cooking at the moment. It's quite a few. They lift well. Oh, there's a lot. I don't want too many. I need those in. There you are, look. They look well. I'm dropping some, I've picked those up. Just loosen the soil and then when we get to the tank we'll wash that off. That's no problem. Little bit of top mess on it but we have we had some quite heavy frost but that shouldn't make any difference to those. Bottoms will be superb. We need to get that celeriac sorted out because the winter's upon us and we're getting some quite hard frost in the morning. This is the celer this year's celeriac. It's not the biggest, but we've had one or two and they, they seem all right. I think we'll take one with us today as well. We'll take it from that end and we'll start cleaning this end and putting the straw in. They are quite hardy, but the frost if it's a, a real hard frost it does tend to damage the top and soften it so what we normally do is take some of these leaves off and then pack straw around them and leave them and if it's going to be frosty for a while we can always lift some because they keep quite well in the shed as well so let's take some off it's just case take the middle you can see what we're going to take off, look, all these split stems, that's all got to come off. Just take them off. Like that, look, any that's a bit splitty and not so good. Good compost though, don't waste them. We'll do these four and then show you how we wrap them. Just go round. It's a lovely celery smell while you're doing this as well. That's fine. Take that one off, but that one as well. There you go. Now we'll just take the sides off this one. Now what we're finding is that now it's getting winter. We have soups at lunchtime. And these if there's a little bit of chicken left or other root vegetables, mix them together in the soup. Absolutely beautiful. I can recommend that soup with these in. Right, just take these leaves off, they don't look so good. It's just in case you pull them round the root, they tend to drop off or rip off anyway. Take those off so we can show you what we're doing. Now, if you are concerned about the slugs, etc., in the straw, then you can use the organic slug pellets to keep the slugs down from the straw. But because our chickens are now roaming, we don't use slug pellets anyway, so we won't put any down. But what I find is that once the straw's on and it's been down for at least five minutes they'll see it and come and sort it out anyway what i use is this barley straw i get it from the pet shop actually it's uh, it's quite good and it is dust extracted so it's quite clean it does have a little bit of seed in it though so you will get an odd piece of barley growing and all you do is just pack that around and barley straw it's nice and soft so it will it's easy to work 
not too much but enough just to cover those the tops of those roots there you go that's how we put the barley straw around the salaria if you're in a very very windy place then I suggest that you you put some little stakes in it as well some sticks just to hold them down we've got a fence there so they're quite protected from the westerlies so I'll finish this row off and then I'll show you it all done as you can see our little chickens have come in and it wasn't even five minutes before they come to investigate what we're up to but they'll go through it and if there are any slugs about they'll pick them up now that's the celeriac strawed up and ready for the colder weather the older girls the older chickens have decided they're staying in the shed today because it was a bit cold and frosty this morning but the younger ones have come out and it looks like they they're going to sort the straw out now i think i'll let them have their bit of fussy with it and then i'll tidy it up and put uh, a little mesh fence around it just to stop them normally when the straw gets very wet they tend to leave it alone but this is nice and fresh and there might be a bit of barley in there as well so they're going to find it now these are the cauliflowers we set oh a few weeks ago now not awfully long now and this is the second crop of brassicas on this piece of land so that goes back to it's well worth putting the effort in preparing the land ready for each crop so we've had two quite good crops of brassicas out of these and only remember we had the calibrese in here and calibrese at that end and cabbage at this end and now we've got cauliflowers at this end and cabbage at that end now well what i've done because we're getting some quite vicious frosts i've pulled the leaves up and just put elastic bands on it but we'll take that one all three about the same with the looks of so we're going to take this one and then we've actually got two smaller ones in the next tunnel that we will put the elastic bands on before we go so I don't forget. <laughs> Let's have a look what we got. There you are look. That's not a bad collie is it for this time of year. We're going to harvest this one. As you can see it's a, it's a nice collie, it's good colour and by holding the leaves over it's kept its colour a little bit. That's my dirty hands by the way. I've muckered it up. So I'll lift this one out and we'll have a look at it. Yeah, good root. There you are then, that's a decent cauliflower except for the dirty hand print that's on it. <laughs> that's a nice autumn cauliflower and there's a good weight to it so I'm quite happy with that. And as I say there's three more still in there and there's two in that tunnel. We will lift the cabbage while we've got the tunnel cover off as well. And then I must show you how I cover those up to keep the frost off the curds. We'll lift this one just to get, pull it out. There you go. Nice cabbage. Something's been gnawing at it a little bit, but we don't mind. I'll just take the root off. Take some of these leaves off. And you see, something's been nibbling at it but that's only on those two leaves so when they're stripped off good solid cabbage there remember that's that mini coal very good cabbage i like that cabbage now we've got two autumn giants here they're not doing awfully well 
but the beginning to form a head now occurred so what I do I put elastic band on my wrist I just pull the leaves up gently so you don't crack any if you can help it and just just drop that band over it just lightly now that will keep the frost off and help that curd de develop and it will be a lovely colour very small one here has to do the same they probably haven't grown so well in this tunnel the cabbages have taken all the goodness from these their savoy is not quite ready yet but they're making good heads so let's cover this little collie up I'll take that weed out over there same again on the wrist just pull them up and then just loosely pop it on yeah. now I'll just cover this tunnel up again make sure there's no chickens in it this time and I'll come back to them now we're at the Brussels as you can see they're standing well I've had one or two fall over that they've had to stake up and we're tending to use the ones that we staked first we have had a couple already since the frost we started harvesting we've had two and they're absolutely beautiful so we're going to get another one for the weekend what I shall do is this one that's fallen over I shall remove the from the bottom cut it off and then take it take all the leaves off and just take the stem up to the house so it's a secateur's job I'm afraid or even if if you can't cut them with the secateurs get an old wood saw and cut them off with that but I should be able to cut this off he says no now I couldn't cut it with a secateur so I've had to fetch one of the old saws I'll cut it off at ground level so it doesn't leave a stump so I won't trip over it and then we'll take the root out when we dig the land ready for the potatoes right so go quite low it's obviously the best way to get them out Away. As you can see there's a we have to hold it up with quite a stake. I'll just take the string off and then we'll take that up. The stalks of these, just let me show you. If you're gonna when you've had the Brussels, if you're going to compost this stalk, what I find is if I get my chopping block where I chop my sticks and I chop it with a hatchet it breaks it up and then I put it on the compost heap and it's gone in no time at all leave them like that they'll take years to rot down but chop them up with the hatchet and they're gone in no time now we finally got up to the shed with our weekend harvest uh, the water was very very cold washing them but we got it done so we'll show you what we've got as you can see there's a lovely cauliflower there that'll do more than one meal it's very nice that is actually autumn giant so it's a good good one to remember the brussel cascade that is always grow cascade because it does very very well on this heavy land i'm very pleased with that a few turnip purple top i think they're called the swede they are called tweed they're nice they, they don't grow awfully big but they're very very sweet now the cabbage mini coal few bits in it but that's fine that'll come off with the first peeling the celeriac can't remember the name of the celeriac but again 
I think there's only two varieties on offer so it's one of those two the leeks were actually free seed from browns last year so again I can't remember the name without checking up but they're not our type of leek because they do suffer with rust and the onion these are guardsmen remember the parade got a lot same again the parade suffered with rust but the guardsmen are coming through very very well now that is a nice harvest for the weekend we do make quite a few soups this time of year so that'll be absolutely delicious in those soups a little bit of meat be fine now that'll be it for this week many many thanks for watching thank you for subscribing we do appreciate it so hopefully we'll see you all next week do take care everyone bye now